Hi, I'm Susie. Today I want to talk about pinching. There's a right way to do it and a wrong way. If you're a client, you'll know what to look for. If you're a nail technician, I just want to show you a few helpful tips. Let's get started. So I've removed my nails so we can start fresh with a new set. Okay, here's my pinching tongs. Well, one is a pair of tweezers, and I wanted to show you the difference. Tweezers are considerably smaller, and they're not meant for this. They're much thinner, they're not near as strong. They're meant for tweezing or splinters. The pinching tool is quite a bit bigger, and it's very, very sturdy, and it's meant for what we want to do. A lot of you have asked questions about forms. Forms are important when it comes to pinching, because you want to make sure, of course, it's important every time you do a new set, that it's placed properly on the nail. Some of you have asked the little piece of paper in the inside. Some nail technicians will take it and put it on the inside for strength. I don't really prefer that. I don't really, I like the flexibility of it, so it's totally a personal preference. It's not wrong either way you do it. So I'm going to, oops, my glasses. Oh, my glasses, my other glasses broke. These are all right, but I like the other ones. I'm gonna have to be on the hunt for a new pair like those ones. Anyway, it made me sad. Actually, I'm gonna do one finger that's not pinched and the rest pinched so you can clearly see the difference. So let's start with this thumb. Part of the pinching can help when you pinch the end of the nails. In the old days, we never did that. We just left it open. So it had kind of a flared look to it. New nails never looked good. If you had 10 and you broke one, you put a new one on, with the way we used to do forms, it was terrible. But now we've gotten smarter over the years and now we pinch the end together. There's much more room to do that. The old forms didn't have room, but they've designed these ones that we can do that now, which is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna put these ones away so I don't use the wrong ones. I'm gonna get my liquid, liquid monomer. That's acrylic. And I'm going to use two different colors. I'm gonna use a cover pink, so when it goes down, you guys can really see it. This is an INM cover pink. Now, I do have a mixture. When I talk about mixing products, I'm talking about mixing within my line. I don't mix two different lines together. And this concoction is a mixture of a light pink that goes on the nail, a pristine pink, this particular line is called pristine, and a little bit of cover pink. So I mix it all together and it creates like a beautiful pink color on the natural nail plate. And you're gonna see that. It's very pretty. My brush. So I'm gonna make a ball here. And I'm gonna show you the standard way first, which is non-pinching. I'll do the free edge first. So I got my perfect ball there and I'm gonna place it on the end. And I'm gonna take away some liquid. So when I'm attacking my ball here, I don't have any liquid in my brush. And so it's always a nice, clean transition. Okay. Whenever I do a blend like this, like doing sort of a natural look, I always use two different colors, like a, one different color on the nail plate. And I wanna be able to do it so that it's very gradual. So as it comes off the nail plate, you can see the color going from a nice lighter, clearer pink near the cuticle and to the free edge being a heavier pink, covering up any free edge you might have. You don't wanna see that. Just going to blend it into that cover pink free edge I just created. You can see when you get your liquid to powder ratio, how easy it can be and it does look. It takes a while to get there, so don't be hard on yourself. Give yourself some time to learn this. This is not easy, but in time, you'll get it. So we're just gonna leave him and let him dry. And I'll, truth be told, these are my favorite forms. These are called free forms by OPI. They're not free. <laughs> They're just a free form. Now this one I'm going to pinch. This will have a nice C curve on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and exaggerate it. That's all we're really doing, isn't it? <laughs> we're just exaggerating everything we do pretty much. Okay, so I'm gonna get my bead and put it on the end. You can actually, when you get a bead, you can drain the liquid out of it too. I don't tend to do that too often. Um, sometimes I will, if I'm working a French, I will, because it is easier to make a French with a uh, very dry bead. You see that nice crisp line. When you're doing a pinching, you can actually flare it out a little. Not that they'll be flared, 
when the end result. But you want to flare it a little because when you pinch, it's going to kind of come up in the center a little bit. And in order for it to be nice and high in the center and take that round shape, you still want it to come down on the sides. It's got to steal the room from somewhere, right? So if you can see the side here, come down a bit on the side. Do not have this straight out. Just bring it down a bit. Very, very specific looking nail. Now you don't have to pinch, it's just a style. Sometimes if I miss my time frame, because I told you it's quite a sweet spot, if you miss it, then you can't pinch anymore. And then, then if you pinch all the others, you got one wider than the other. So I'm gonna pay attention right now. And I'm just going to let this cure a little bit and I'll show you that sweet moment where we can pinch. So sometimes if you get a little patient, which is generally my nature, you can sort of pinch it a little, like the end, and you can see that it's going to move. If you look down, you can see it's got a, a C curve. I naturally have quite a C curve, but we're gonna try to really optimize it. And when you pinch with this thing, we want to pinch, not the tips, we're not using the tips, we're so used to that with the tweezers, but we're actually gonna focus in on this part. So this part right here of the tweezer, this part in here, not the tip. When we do that, we're gonna go to the sides, and then we're focusing in this part here, not the tip. We're gonna go in here, and we're going to squeeze just ever so gently. Oh, that's not too bad. I'm getting impatient, remember? Just gonna leave it a little bit longer. Now this guy, I'll take him off. It's perfect, it's all dried up. It's got a really nice natural C-curve. And that is really very natural. If someone's looking for a really natural look, or if their nails are kind of on the narrow side anyway, you really don't need to pinch. It's if someone has a bit of a wider finger, or you're going for a very specific look, because I will say, a very slender long nail looks really good pinched. But a wider nail too, that's a little bit shorter, also looks really good pinched. So it really just depends on what kind of look you're going for. So I'm just slightly pinching. If you pinch too hard, you might see a white line with the blood being removed down the center of the finger. Too much. You just want to give it a gentle, gentle pinch. You don't want this to hurt. That's not good. Nail visits shouldn't hurt. <laughs> it should be fun. You should look forward to it. Okay, that's a really strong pinch. You can see that real strong loop super super strong but you can see when I pinched it and when it goes up like that when it comes up it pulls up the sides so you need to bring the sides down really low see how far I brought that you won't keep it there of course we're gonna file it a little bit but you don't want to add you can't add that would be a pain that's a strong pinch a little too strong for my liking but that that is the style right and I pinched it from here too it's really important to make it nice and narrow in here if you're gonna try this, just note that you will you know, mess up. That's how we learn, right? We have to make our few mistakes before we get it. Okay, I'm just gonna continue and do the other ones. I've done these pinching things where I've done the glitter and the clear capping, and it's actually really cool. When you pinch, you can see the clear capping and the glitter just shifting. It's really cool. So if you pinch it too soon, you could dent in the sides. But if you pinch it too late, you can crack that acrylic. And you can hold it and you can do what I'm doing. I'm sort of finding my sweet spot and then I hold it for a second. He's good. See, the application does lend to be a bit of a flared look. Not my choice, but again, I'm just going down on the sides so we can have that room when we're filing up. It will not be flared when we're finished, I promise you that. So you can see the two different strengths on those two. One is severely pinched and one is not. Now I can go a little bit more. You can actually do this with your fingers too. There we go, just a little bit more. You could get crazy. Just depends on how far you want to go. Just feeling this with my fingers. It's a little too soon 
for the metal, but you can actually sort of just pinch it a little bit. Some people will do this, you can dip into this and get a little powder on your pinching tool and go like this so it doesn't stick. It's a good idea. I actually did that a long time ago, but then I just was able to figure out when the right time was so it didn't really matter anymore. But it's probably a good, helpful learning tool. So find my pinch, I feels good right there. When I couldn't find my tweezers a couple of times, or my pinching tweezers, I did do this by hand. But I did find if your fingers aren't pressing even, my thumb was a little stronger than my index and it was a little wonky. You could do it, but this is much, much more accurate. There's also these tools you can buy. There's like these round tools you can stick under there in different sizes. I just found it kind of awkward holding it and pinching around it. You can do it though, if you need a little extra help. Okay, I'm just gonna finish up my pinky and then we'll get to filing them. Okay, I'm all pinched up and then I'm gonna start filing. And when you're filing this one, this is just the standard one. I didn't really, I didn't do any pinching on this whatsoever. I decided I'm not going to have them quite so long. I just do that, don't I? I do them way too long. I think I just get excited. So for any of those who want to know, when I file, I file up all the, you know, bulk of it, and then I go up behind, and then I shape each and every one up. So I don't complete one nail, and then go on to complete one nail and complete. I do all the bulk filing. Then I'll do my cuticle filing, then I'll do the shaping. I'm gonna take this index down a little bit. You can see those sides. I'm gonna file it up a bit. I don't want it draping down that far. I'm sort of establishing all my links. Get in there. Now I'm going to fine tune any of the thickness and really shape it up nice. Awesome! We're all ready to go. All pinched, ready for polish. Let's just oil it up. So I just need a generous amount of cuticle oil. Massage it in. And I'm all pinched and ready for polish. I'm just going to put a nice nude on there. Check out the reveal. That's a fun option that you can get when you're getting your nails done. There's always something new in the nail world to explore. I'm looking forward to doing my next video. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.